Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Today, guys, I'm out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture in Tifton, Georgia, and we're going to be doing some repair work to this 1917 Vulcan Ironworks uh, steam locomotive. This locomotive has been in operation in our museum since the early 1980s. And as you can imagine with a piece of machinery that's well over 100 years old, it requires a lot of maintenance and upkeep. Uh, this past week while operating this locomotive, uh, we discovered that there was a crack that was starting to form over here in one of the valve bodies on one of the steam engines in the locomotive. Wasn't leaking any steam yet, uh, but there was a visible crack and something that we want to get in there and try to take care of before it becomes a bigger problem. Now, I've been told by the maintenance person out here at the museum that this has been repaired in the past, probably about 25 years ago. Uh, same problem, they went in there and did a repair on it and evidently that repair has since failed. Uh, but after lasting for well over 25 years, uh, so I'm not gonna point any fingers at that. Um, anyway, we're gonna be coming in here, taking this uh, thing apart. I'll show you what we gotta work on. Probably be taking it back to my shop, making the repairs to it, and then bringing it back out and reinstalling it. So let's show you what we gotta work with here, and we'll get started on taking this thing apart. So what we're looking at here is the actual steam engine on the right side of the locomotive. There is a steam engine in that cylinder down there, and that's what powers uh, the, the drivers or the wheels on this right side of the locomotive. Uh, you got down here at the bottom, the, uh, the cylinder, this is going to have your piston and stuff will be up in here. On the top is the valve that goes in here. There's a valve block above this that lets the steam in and out. And right here, you can see a crack. It's actually worse than it was the other day. They ran the locomotive on Saturday, so um, it kind of made that a little bit bigger problem, but uh, again, nothing that we can't take care of. So uh, what we're going to be doing today is taking this valve cover off. We'll actually be removing the valve body. We'll have to take the valve out and uh, get in there and, and repair that. You can kind of see where it had been welded up one time in the past, and we'll talk a little bit more about that previous repair a little bit later on. Just a little bit closer look here, you can see that crack in there, and I can tell you that there's a matching one on the back side. Uh, we really can get the camera in there to look at it, uh, but this is exactly where it had failed before and where it had been repaired in the past. And uh, like I said, we're gonna be going in there and trying to get that taken care of. Let's get at it. So first things first, I need to get this uh, cover off. This is a cast iron cover that fits over this. There is uh, an oil line that comes in here through this uh, choke. Basically, there's a check valve in this that prevents the steam from blowing the oil back in. We, we pump in uh, steam cylinder oil. There's a mechanical lubricator on the locomotive that just kind of puts a little bit in, um, and that mixes with the steam, and that's what lubricates the cylinder inside the, the locomotive. So we need to get this off and out of the way first. So we'll start by just removing this, uh, this copper line that we got going to it. See, I need to get another wrench there. There we go. And I'm probably going to drip some oil. I'm just going to move it out of the way right now. And then next, we're just going to unscrew this whole body. And with that, this cover should lift off if I can. I'm gonna have to break it loose. It's, there it goes. This front valve basically just has a uh, weight in it, a, a valve in it. And whenever there's steam pressure, on the cylinder, it will close the valve. Whenever the, there's no pressure on the cylinder, uh, it will open the valve, and that just lets the uh, cylinders kind of breathe, prevents you from kind of getting a vacuum lock in those cylinders, and it just really just lets it breathe. Uh, we don't want to get 
pressure in there, let that steam bleed off when you're not running the locomotive. A lot of people say when we're stopped, like, man, this locomotive sure does leak a lot. Well, what it is is when you're not pressurizing the, the cylinder, it opens up and bleeds. So yeah, you get some steam coming out. All right, we got that out. Now our lid should come off. Tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna put some blocks of wood up underneath this thing to, let me get my fingers up underneath it without any risk of uh, hurting them. Here we go. So there's a little place where that threads in on the front that was catching in the front. I got it pushed forward and up past it, so, and up off some blocks. So I think I can get it off now if I can grab a hold of it. This is uh, getting worse and worse. That crack extends way back in there all around this. Um, what happens is, is this piece on the front here, this is a pusher plate that goes into a cavity in there where you put some packing material. And as the packing wears, you tighten this up and it pushes in there. And then as it wears out, you pull it out, put more packing in there. That keeps the steam in the steam chest and from coming, not from coming out around this uh, valve rod. Um, the original setup had the two bolts coming out on the sides and where that hole was through there, that cracked out eventually. And that's when they came in and put this on. Basically they welded or brazed on a plate on the outside of this and then brazed up all the body up underneath it. And they moved the studs go up and down on this side just so they had some good fresh material to go into. Looks like we're cracked right there where the old crack was at. So we're gonna have to get in there and grind that out and uh, probably braze it up. So up next, I uh, need to get the valve rod off, disconnected, and then we'll take the, the studs off the top here and this whole piece should pick up. There's a copper gasket on the top and the bottom that uh, kind of keeps everything in, in alignment or keeps everything sealed up in here. All right, let's uh, move on. So the next step is I need to remove this uh, rod, this valve rod. This goes over to the eccentrics in the locomotive. The eccentrics is basically what rocks that valve back and forth. It's tied into a cam or an eccentric on the, the back wheels of this. And it's gonna move that valve rod back and forth in proper timing with the steam engine um, to make everything work right. Now, what's gonna be important is that when we put it back together, we need to get it back in the exact same position because this engine is timed. And if I have this screw just uh, one turn off, it changes the position of the valve up front and that can really mess with the, the alignment of the, the timing. So we're gonna be, make sure we count these threads up here and make sure we go back in the exact same place. There's a pin here that connects over to the, uh, the rockers on the eccentrics. We'll pull that out and then we'll unscrew the, this rod from everything else. And then that will allow that whole um, body to come up when we get ready to. So I'm gonna count threads. I'm gonna take some pictures of this so that we can get it put right back in exactly where it goes. So this is where the valve rod connects to the centric piece. And first thing I'll notice as this isn't in, al in alignment, tells me we probably got some wear and some bushings and pins in here that we may need to take care of while we're working on this. Guys, I apologize for the light out here at the shop. It's uh, less than ideal. I have to wear a headlamp to see what I'm doing. And I know it's not ideal for video, but it's kind of what we got. So there's a pin in here to keep that nut from backing off on the back. 
and that comes off finger tight. And this pin will come out, shoulder bolt. Doesn't look to be too terribly worn. I might have made that pin in the past. We were, did a bunch of uh, pins and bushings on this thing probably 10, 15 years ago. And uh, I may need to rebush the inside of this. We'll see, we'll check it out. I'm gonna go move the uh, valve gear to kind of get this out of the way so we can unscrew it. So the video stopped on that last one. I don't know how much we caught, but basically this rod now just unscrews from that valve and slides out. You got an impact wrench here and we're gonna pull these off. I think we'll start by just breaking that seal all the way around on that top plate because it's separate. Yeah. What we've got here is just a bunch of little shims of wood and I'm just slowly picking this lid up, trying to get it past, there you go, past the, the studs on top so that we can just pick it straight up. I remember from past experience on this that this thing was aggravating to get up over those studs. All right. I think it's helpful. I think it is too. That's, uh, all right. I think we can get it there. Let's just pick it up we and go that way or we'll figure it out when we get out there. There we go. Get that out of here. So you can kind of see in here now what's going on. The, there's these slots down in the bottom. This is uh, let steam into the front of the cylinder. This is an exhaust for the front. There's two ports on the other side. This slide valve is actually forward, farther forward right now than what it would normally go. Um, it, but it would normally just be covering up. It would open up let the steam go to the front and then it back up and go let the exhaust out. Same thing on the other side here. These go to different ports inside the engine. So let's see, there are, let's get a Sharpie pen, David, and number these so we can know which way they go back in. There are some brass, or I'm not sure they're brass, but there's some shims here. I'm just gonna number these one, one. Off, yeah, it. probably wouldn't hurt. Maybe punched you on this flat part right here. Yeah. It don't hurt the number. There's springs up on the bottom that make a seal with the top of that top casting we just pulled off. There's that one. Yeah, make one in the spring. Okay. I don't doubt it. All right, let's got those out. There's also some shims in here. The big ones on the front and the little ones on the back. We'll do that. I'm gonna go ahead and take these shims out. Let's see if we can get that thin something up underneath it. What do you 
going to go next. Let's get over here. Here you go. All right. Hang on a minute. Let me. Yeah. You go get some pieces of two before. All right, go ahead. I, it's it's fine. I'll go. Okay. All right, you ready? Let's do it kind of slow to start with. Not too bad at all. So I'm going to turn this thing a little bit. Well, guys, I brought this thing home to my shop uh, to get this thing prepped and ready for welding or brazing, as in the case it's going to be. First off, let me just say that this whole piece that we're working on is called a steam chest. I think I used a couple of different terms for what we were working on. In my mind, I was having one of those moments where it, the name wasn't coming to me, but this is actually called the steam chest. This is pretty much pressurized with steam uh, when the locomotive is in operation. And of course, the valve is going back and forth and the steam is going to the cylinders and the valve is porting it either to the cylinders or to the uh, exhaust, depending on its position. Fortunately, while this we got a pretty nasty crack in here, fortunately, it has not broken through to the steam chest side. It's just this ear or this boss on the end that is kind of cracked around. Um, so there is no steam escaping out of this. In fact, we, we checked on the locomotive. I was kind of surprised that when we were looking that there wasn't any steam, but now that I got it off, I can see, yeah, it's, the crack does not go through to the inside. That's good. That's real good um, because it's going to make repairs a lot easier. Game plan, we're going to get here and grind all this out, and then I'm going to braze it back together. We'll take a clamp and kind of bend it back. It has kind of bent out a little bit here. Uh, like I said, this has been repaired in the past. You can tell they used nickel rod. I'm not a fan of nickel rod on cast iron. Uh, I've said that many times before. And what often happens when you're welding cast iron, when you're actually melting this in there, you melt the base material, you melt the cast iron, and you get a brittle line between the two areas that you're, you're welding. And that area with the cast iron, it becomes so brittle that it's very prone to breaking again. With brazing, we don't get the cast iron hot enough to change the physical structure of it and you pretty much retain the strength of the base material and in the case here the the nickel isn't really what broke it was it was the cast iron busted back out again but uh, we're going to make best out of it we're going to get in here and uh, brace it up and make a repair uh, long term um, I'm not going to make any promises right now, but we're, I'm going to see if we can get the blueprints for this part and see about getting a new piece cast and uh, machined and eventually swap them out at a convenient time uh, when we're doing maintenance on the locomotive, uh, just so that we don't run into this problem again down the road. Um, this obviously, this last repair, it lasted 25 years. That's what we're trying. We were trying to figure up. David was. Uh, he's trying to remember when it was done, but it's, it's lasted at least 25 years. So you know, I can't knock it too much. But obviously, replacing it with a, a new casting would be the the best uh, possible scenario. And you know, hopefully, where somebody isn't having to come in here and repair this repair again sometime down the road, maybe long after I'm gone. But if we go ahead and repair it properly and just make a new part, um, that should last theoretically, you know, from now on. So guys, I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and stop this video here and we're gonna make a separate video on doing the repair. Um, it's just gonna get too long if we try to do all this in one video. So um, that's gonna get, kind of be my game plan. So that's gonna be a wrap uh, for this episode. Come back here in a week or so, we'll continue this on and show you guys uh, the, the repair process and hopefully getting it back on the locomotive. Uh, I think that a, a braze repair done properly theoretically should last indefinitely. But uh, like I said, I think ultimately we, we're gonna look at maybe seeing if we can get this whole thing recast. 
uh, if I can get the blueprints and so forth like that to do it. So with that, guys, uh, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. Big, huge thank you to all the supporters out there who support the site financially through Patreon, uh, through PayPal. However, um, very much appreciate your efforts. And guys, with that, we will again catch you on the next video. Thanks again for watching.